I want you to hit me as hard as you can. In 1985 was a huge year for Sylvester Stallone. After the mammoth success that was Rambo First Blood Part 2, which was released on May 22, 1985, Sly followed up that potent jab with a just as powerful cinematic right cross called Rocky IV, which was released on November 27, 1985. And man, did that film mark me as a kid. It was the first Rocky movie that I saw on the big screen after my dad gave up on seeing Rocky III when he couldn't find parking. Damn you, pops. Daddy thinks you're the best boy in the world. Hmm? My daddy loves you. It was the Rocky movie made for my generation. Yes, a child of the 80s bombarded by MTV. I want my MTV. And I'll always remember my dad not caring for it due to the change in style and tone compared to the previous entries. On my end, I lapped it up like a lapdog running out of laps. I so wanted to be Ivan Drago, which led to me training with my cheapo weeder weights set on the film's soundtrack, namely Training Montage and War by Vince DiCola, who took over for Bill Conti on the sequel after Conti went on to score Karate Kid Part 2 instead. And of course, Burning Heart by Survivor. It takes a burning heart. In the burning who had also composed the song Eye of the Tiger for Rocky III. Stallone has recently released the director's cut of the picture, which beefs up the character development and eliminates the more kitsch aspects of the theatrical cut, going for a more grounded vibe. I enjoy this new cut, but prefer the original version. It runs smoother, is tighter, and more engaging on the whole. The edit is more kinetic, and Vince DiCola's arresting score is more prominent. On that, it makes for a great companion piece, and all Rocky fans should give it a whirl. I'd love for Sly to recut Cobra next. I said it, time will tell. Your disease, and I'm the cure. Thank you so much for watching Sylvester Stallone Revisited. If you like this type of content, make sure to click on the like button as well as the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. Now back to the show. For now though, let's give the glorious montage overloaded Rocky IV the love it deserves. Rocky IV was mostly shot in Wyoming, USA, which stood in for the snow-covered Soviet Union. The farm where Rocky trained was located in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and the jaw-dropping mountain scenery, all about that top of the mountain. <laughs> Courtesy of Grand Teton National Park, the final bout in the ring between Rocky and Drago was shot in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, at some dive called the Agrodome. The film is infamous for many things, one of them being the introduction of now iconic action star Dolph Lundgren. Although Dolph had appeared in a tiny role in the James Bond film A View to a Kill, which also came out in 1985, and co-starred his then-girlfriend Grace Jones, Rocky IV truly put him on the map. Dolph was actually passed on by the casting director at first due to his towering height. Ivan Drago, since that tragedy in Las Vegas and the death of Apollo Creed, has been re-nicknamed Death from Above. But eventually he managed to meet Stallone in person who advised him to gain some muscle if he wanted the role. Dolph did just that and he beat out about 8,000 other chumps to lock the part. Word has it it was Dolph's idea to have Drago speak very little in the film to contrast Rocky's previous more verbal opponents Apollo Creed and Clubber Lang. Sly loved the idea and went with it, emphasizing Drago's intimidating presence via the way he shot him. It should be said that the Drago character was somewhat inspired by real-life German heavyweight champion and ex-German Air Force paratrooper Max Schmeling. Good old Stallone, always finding inspiration from real life. And as you may know, Rocky himself was loosely based on the boxer Chuck Wepner. Stallone, who of course stars, wrote and directed the picture, being the striving and detail-oriented artist that he is. And he had a lot of the boxing sequences done for real, i.e. the authentic sparring matches with punches that actually landed. And damn does it show, especially in the final fight. Unfortunately, that led to the now legendary story of Dolph sending Sly to the hospital after punching him in the chest so hard during a take that it slammed his heart against his breastbone, causing it to swell. Stallone was flown in from the set to emergency and was forced into intensive care for eight days. Yep. Whatever he hits, he destroys. <laughs> Carl Weathers, who reprised his role as the Muhammad Ali-ish Apollo Creed, got dolphed, 
While shooting their boxing match, Lundgren improvised throwing Weathers into the corner of the boxing ring full force. After that move by Dolph, Weathers lost his beans and threatened to walk off the pitcher. They stopped shooting for four days, Weathers was eventually coaxed back in, and Lundgren was told to chill the F out. Bridget Nielsen was also fairly new to audiences via this flick. She had starred with Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 1985 bomb Red Sonia before taking on the role of Drago's wife in Rocky IV. Funnily enough, her part didn't exist in the shooting script. Rumor has it she got in there and wound up with lines first destined for Michael Pataki because she was, you know, engaged to Stallone at the time. And the two, of course, later married, did Cobra together, and then divorced. Sly has spoken of that union over the years, and it doesn't sound like a very healthy relationship, so let's just leave it at that. Rocky IV owned all of us when it killed off the beloved Apollo Creed character. When I first saw the film as a kid, I was floored by his death and cried more than I did watching E.T. Because, you know, Apollo was dead and E.T. was just going home, so it's fine. What started out as a joke has turned out to be a disaster. Stallone has since gone on record stating that he actually regrets making that creative choice. Today, taking into account that it led to the Creed franchise and Drago's son and resurgence, I'm personally pretty happy he did it. Quick aside, word has it that a series focusing on Drago post Creed 2 and hopefully his son is now in the works. I hope it's true because if so, I'll watch it. And how can we talk about Rocky IV without mentioning Polly's birthday gift in the film, that weird ass robot which Polly reprograms to be a quasi sentient female service who eventually busts chops. You're the greatest. See you, sport. See you. Polly, who taught her to talk like that? She loves me. Oh. Even back in the 80s, that element was an odd choice. Created by International Robotics Incorporated, the robot was written into the movie after it had been used to help treat Stallone's autistic son, Sergio. After the film's release, the robot wound up getting its 10 seconds of fame when it toured with James Brown, who of course delivered the musical number Living in America in the film before the Creed vs. Drago match. The song was Brown's first top 40 single in 11 years and the last of his industrious career. The robot even turned up in a Carly Simon video called My New Boyfriend. Her new boyfriend at the end turns out to be the robot. It's very 80s. As an aside, Sly cutting that robot out of his director's cut was probably one of my favorite changes. Please make a wish. It's creepy that talks that thing. Although Rocky IV was met with a mixed reception by critics upon its release, it opened huge and wound up not only being the biggest grossing Rocky movie of all time, but also the highest grossing sports film until the blind side bumped it off the pedestal in 2009. But still, that was almost 25 years later. Pretty amazing. Granted, watching it today, it does come off as a series of montages with its MTV aesthetics set to full on 80s music, but hey, nothing wrong with that. The grounded style of Rocky 1 and 2 are totally absent, and the more stylized tendencies that Stallone displayed in Rocky 3, which he also directed, were gunned up in full force here. Although all the usual Rocky series themes are touched upon, they are done so in a lighter fashion than in the three previous films. Something bad happens, the odds seem impossible to overcome, some training, a speech by Adrian. I'm with you no matter what. Rocky digs deeper and bada boom, a victory. On that, it didn't take away from the film's charm and entertainment value. I'll also always remember, there's no easy way out or hearts on fire montages. Or iconic lines like if he dies, dies, he dies, I must break you. And so forth. And I pretty much know the whole, if I can change, you can change monologue by heart now. If I can change. And you can change. And you can change. Everybody can change. A scene that Sly improvised on the spot, I heard. <laughs> well done, Stallion. Also, I mean, it for sure has the greatest training montage of all time. I mean, it's a masterpiece. Look at it. All of that, of course, is a testament to the film's long-lasting impact. On a side note, am I the only one who laughed his ass off at Polly slipping and falling in the snow scene? That bit always killed me and my brother for some reason. It's his yelping that sells it. Watch it again. Well done, Burt Young. And I'm sure that I'm not alone in saying that Rocky IV inspired me to train harder and harder, and to this day, I still use the score at times to charge me up when pumping iron. And I'm sure gym memberships went through the roof after that bad boy opened. Rocky IV is definitely a film of its era, and along with Rambo II, solidified Stallone's ownership of the 80s. I love the shit out of this movie, the potent injection of nostalgia I get every time I rumble with it, always hits the sweet spot. 
The way I see it, if something inspires you, moves you, and puts a huge smile on your face, then that's all that matters. And Rocky IV, oh, it so does that. So 10 on 10 Stallones from me. Now sing it with me. Sweetest victory, I love you more than life itself. Okay, we can maybe cut that part out. These words, you cut it, you heard it. You see, you see, he's not a machine, he's a man.